Hello fellow YouTubers. This is just a quick video I'm making which is in rebuttal to the recent video by the Peak Prosperity channel on here on YouTube, Aka Chris Martinson, that the SARS-CoV-2 virus responsible for COVID-19 disease was made in the laboratory. That is an artificial man-made virus. His video title is, Are Our Scientists Lying to You? I give the link here and it's in the description below this video as well on this site. Basically the claim is, SARS-CoV-2 is lab made. He says this quite firmly, both at the beginning and end of his video, although in between times when he's going through his so-called evidence, he picks his words a bit more carefully and never says it directly outright. My question to Mr. Martinson is just who is lying? I will present Chris's basic claims, his so-called evidence, which he refers to in his video as the smoking gun. This will be followed by my rebuttal after I investigate his claims in more detail and I'll present my evidence. I will show that Chris Martinson makes misleading statements, either deliberately or intention, uh, or, or accidentally, or through not fully understanding the papers he's quoting. I have a feeling it's the former of these. It's intentional to mislead the public. So the smoking gun. The smoking gun. SARS-CoV-2, as pointed out by Chris Martinson, contains a 12 base insert in the spike protein gene. And this codes for a furin cleavage site. Furin is a protease. And it's well known that in other coronaviruses, the cleavage of the spike protein at this site or similar sites elsewhere, increases in effectivity in host range. He also claims that such inserts do not occur naturally and he comes to the conclusion lab technologists must have put it there. He then starts to present what he calls evidence. So his so-called evidence. At about 25 to 30 minutes in this video he goes into this in quite some detail. He claims that such sites were deliberately inserted by previous researchers in the laboratory in other coronaviruses in a series of papers from 2006 to 2008. Chris Martinson at this stage is clearly implying that the researchers deliberately inserted a 12 base piece of nucleic acid into these coronaviruses to increase infectivity. After investigating, I'd like to ask Mr. Martinson, did they? And as you'll see, the answer is no. I would ask viewers to go to his video and read the legend to the figure. I'd also suggest viewers also check the other papers, which you can find on PubMed, and confirm that the other papers say virtually the same thing. At 26 minutes 53, of his video, Chris claims that a Japanese group did it in 2008. No, they did not. All you have to do is read the legend. It clearly states amino acids positions 798 and 799 are changed into arginine to make the recognition sequence furin. This is amino acid substitution by point mutation. It is not base insertion of extra bases. It's a completely different way of doing things. So again, just who lied, Mr. Martinson, the scientists or you? Let's talk about the furin site in a bit more detail and his other claim. He suggested that such 12 base inserts do not occur naturally. So is that true? No, it's not true. These base inserts 
do occur naturally and there's evidence of it. Let's look at the nature paper that Chris refers to quite in quite some detail in his video. He refers to the paragraph before the one I'm just about to read. For some reason he left out the following paragraph. In avian influenza viruses, rapid replication and transmission in highly dense chicken populations selects for the acquisition of pre-basic cleavage sites in the hemagglutinin HA protein, which serves a function similar to that of the coronavirus spike protein. Acquisition of pre-basic cleavage sites in HA by insertion, repeat, by insertion or recombination converts low pathogenicity avian influenza viruses into highly pathogenic forms. The acquisition of polybasic cleavage sites by HA has been observed after repeated passage in cell culture or through animals. For anyone that wants to investigate this further, I recommend that final reference, number 17, in the Nature paper, which is given in um, Chris's video. So I have another question for Chris Martinson and his channel, Peak Prosperity. Why did you not show this part of the Nature paper referencing studies demonstrating natural acquisition of Protea's cleavage sites? After all, you spent a long time referring to the paragraph right before this one, which was discussing the importance of such cleavage sites and ineffectivity. You must have been aware of this following paragraph discussing the natural origin of base inserts causing the acquisition of protea sites. So thank you folks for listening. I will email Peaks Prosperity channel and make them aware of this video rebuttal to his claims. Let's see if he will respond, which I think is his duty to do so, and perhaps the audience can help me by pressurising to, to respond as well. Thank you very much.